Good day, Creative Spirit, and welcome. We'll start today with Voices United number 381, Spirit of Life. Again, in Voices United. Um, no, I take that back. 380, sorry. <laughs> 380 in Voices United. I was thinking about 375 and I had it marked. No, 380. She comes sailing on the wind. Oh, 
comes from the moderator, Richard Bott. And he says, On the day of Pentecost, Jesus' disciples decided to go down to the marketplace. There, with people from all over the known world, and with the Holy Spirit, they began to tell the stories of Jesus. And everyone who was there understood what they were, what they were saying in their own mother tongues. The first ministry of the apostles was made possible by the mystery of the Holy Spirit. This is one of the scripture stories I love. I wish we could take a month to focus on the presence of the Holy Spirit, not just in the Pentecost story, but in many of the places the Spirit shows up in scripture. I think that one of the things we would find is that the Holy Spirit is a harbinger of change, sometimes moving like a gale force wind, sometimes in the whisper of a breath. Wherever we meet the Holy Spirit in scripture, from the first creation story, to the dry bones given new life, to the stories of Lady Wisdom, to Jesus' baptism and time in the desert, to the first time the apostles spoke to the entire world about the good news of Jesus, spoke to the world, something amazing was about to happen. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, is subversive. It blows where it wants to and, like the wind, can get up in our faces and move creation in unexpected ways. One of the things that I love about the Pentecost story is that the people gathered asked themselves, how can we understand these Galileans and in our own languages? It makes me wonder. The Holy Spirit may have landed on the apostles like tongues of flame, but did it change them? Or did it change the people who were listening? Or perhaps both? possibly opening something in them to the Jesus story. As a denomination, the United Church of Canada believes that the Holy Spirit continues to move in the world. As we say in the New Creed, God works in us and others by the Spirit. Where we recognize movements in the world that bring healing, hope, life, and abundant life for all creation, there's a pretty good chance that we've met the movement of the Holy Spirit. When Paul was writing to the Galatians, he talked about the fruits of the Holy Spirit being love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I wonder what it would be like if we took the time to keep our minds, our hearts, and our souls open to the movement of the Holy Spirit, not just inside our lives, but out in the world around us. I wonder what we would find happening if we went searching for places where those fruits were growing. Perhaps as communities of faith we could go on spirit sightings, oh, I like that, spirit sightings, where we regularly gather together 
to talk together about where we are experiencing the Holy Spirit moving in the world. I wonder what the Holy Spirit might change in us as we experience the stories of the Spirit changing the world. I'd love to hear about the Spirit sightings you're having in your life, your community of faith and in the world. May the Holy Spirit fill you this Pentecost and may you be changed in amazing, life-giving ways. Christ's peace to you. And a prayer, let us pray. O oh God, you who are always doing a new thing, we confess that we sometimes close windows against the fresh air of new ideas, against the noise of other people's worries against the winds of change. God of every place and time, we confess that we often draw the curtains against people who are different, against world news or community concerns. Forgive us our insulation in our locked homes, our shuttered churches, the security systems on our hearts. Open up our lives and let your spirit blow through. Amen. Supplies for today are pretty basic. Uh, you, if you're going to choose to do watercolor, um, a 9 by 12, 140 pound um, paper, watercolor paper, and then watercolor paint in whatever you happen to have. Um, the other thing that you could do is you could do this with acrylic paint. So if you have, say, like a 8 by 10, 9 by 12 canvas, something in that size, or a 12 by 12, um, and you have um, craft paints, that's fine too, or any kind of acrylic paint. Um, or if you've got acrylic paper for acrylic paint, then that would be fine too. Um, that would be the, your, your base or your underpainting as we're going, as it's referred to um, for our negative space painting today. So that, and then you, we do, um, oh, and of course, then you would need some jars of, of water. Um, once you've got that, you'll also need, of course, brushes and a variety of brushes, something that is large enough, maybe a mop brush if you've got it. Um, these large flat brushes work great for adding water to your paper if you're going to be doing the watercolor. And then just a variety of, of um, round brushes or flat brushes just to be adding color in and textures and things like that. And then a smaller, <clears throat> some sort of f much finer round or a finer angled brush for the negative space painting where we go around in the white and that white is acrylic. So that's the other thing that you'll need is white acrylic paint. Um, now I'm showing the tube. This, the medium bodied or the heavier bodied stuff, um, you're probably better off, because I had to water this down a bit, um, using the bottles of white craft paint, the acrylic craft paint, because it is um, far, it's got, it's far more fluid. You'll find that tracing around your markings on this will be much easier actually. So if you've got the fluid paint, then I would stick with the fluid for this. Um, if not, you're just gonna sort of have to water down as I sort of had to water down my, my heavier bodied paint. Uh, saran wrap, you will also need in smaller pieces, not necessarily one sheet to go over it, but smaller chunks so that you can, you've got room to scrunch it up. And what else? A pencil, maybe handy, a piece of chalk, white chalk, would definitely um, be helpful for today and perhaps your um, ultrafine sharpie or some other sort of archival or um, waterproof thin black marker and of course your painter's tape and I think that's it oh rags rags paper towels as well all right okay so we're going to give this we'll start with the process then well, here's my first attempt um, at my Pentecost theme. And I've given you, I sent out some examples of the underpainting, right? That, um, or the negative space painting like we've done in the past, but that might give you um, a, just a better or a refresher as to what, it's, what we're looking at and 
um, just a better idea of, of where we're, what we're up to. And like the swirls, I, the one picture I think had a lot of swirls in it, which I thought might be really helpful. Um, and it was actually after I had done this because I wanted more swirls. So, um, yeah. And I, you know, I, because much like, you know, it's always representational, right? And I wasn't sure exactly how to go about drawing or tracing, um, the dove, um, kind of thing. So I just sort of gave that illusion, if you will, um, and then tried to sort of come up with some idea of how to differentiate the wings up at the top as opposed to leaving it. Now I could have left it all with the under painting showing through and that's fine. Um, and if you'll notice um, up here, uh, that was, um, I'll show you the pictures of, of some of the things that I had found in the process of painting earlier and it's part of the sort of trying to keep in mind, I was praying through, um, you know, about transformation and change. And after I had done the saran wrap on the under painting, I realized that there were all these really cool um, shapes. And so after I had then outlined those shapes and acknowledged those shapes, then I was going to allow myself to paint on over top of them. And it's part of the transformation and change, right? That's sometimes it's just, you need to go through that sort of um, physical idea. So that's what that's left over from, which is fine. Uh, totally okay. And again, my little representational people, because I, you know, arms is not something I'm going to, and you could just do one head. You don't have to put people in. You might, however, you might, you just want all kinds of flames. Maybe you just want representational of wind, um, you know, wavy patterns. However, the, give it some thought while you're doing the underpainting um, or allowed because you, you have to have some dry time. So you've got some time to think about it or perhaps maybe doodle out some thoughts, some images, um, which is a good idea right on a scrap piece of paper doodle out whether you want people and whether you want flames and if you want curly cues how you might go about them to sort of give that idea of winds and swirls and that kind of thing that's all right because like i say you'll have drying time so um with the finished piece so take your nine by um and you again it doesn't matter whether you're doing landscape or whether you're going to do it um in portrait that is fine um, I'm just going to sort of show you on a, some smaller pieces. Um, all right, just a, whoops, this is just a half of a nine by 12. And um, yeah, we'll go from, we'll go start, we'll start with the underpainting. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, and I'm using watercolor. Like I say, you could use acrylics if you wanted. Um, this was acrylic. Okay, and on a paper that was made for acrylic paint. And this was actually part of an example, I think that probably from our, our Remembrance Day poppies, I believe, um, right? Where we just sort of sponged on and brushed in some cases and then sponged in different colors and then just sort of worked it through. That would be great too if you wanted to do something like that with acrylic. Um, but that's the, that's the first step. So, well, technically I suppose paint taping it down is gonna be your first step, right? <laughs> so I just tape randomly. I sort of look through, looking through and use the half of the, the width of the tape is going to be on the paper and half of the width. You can see the, the paper through the tape, right? And then half of the tape is going to be on my surface below. Whatever that work surface might happen to be. And, um, and then I'm going to get, and then we've got your paints ready, right? And I'm just using 
As far as my watercolor paints, I'm just using some reds and some oranges, some yellows, a little blue and a little purple as well. I think colors that you might see in your campfires the last time you had a campfire, maybe you've got a wood stove at home or, um, or maybe you want to go online and look up pictures of um, or, you know, video of flames or things if you want dancing around, or maybe it doesn't matter. It can be completely up to you. All right. Um, okay. So then you're going to want to, uh, lay down some water. It's got a, you know, flat brush here, larger flat brush. And I'm just going to, again, because I'm using watercolor, if you're doing acrylic, um, I wouldn't necessarily start out with a paper wet, but um, with the watercolor I want to start, I personally want to start out because I just want the colors to sort of run and bleed. Um, and once you get the paper, sort of look, get your head into the light, um, you can see where you haven't put water. You don't want water pooling on it. Okay, you just want to make sure that it glistens and then you're just going to give it a moment or two for that to soak in as well. Um, and be, and, and realize too that yes, you're, it will probably buckle and stuff a bit. That's just, you know, unless you're using super dense paper, more than 140 pounds, it's still going to buckle a bit. Um, and what we're going to do then, um, yeah, maybe just a little don't want to overwork the paper too much um, so with with the one that I had the um, this I made sure that because I wanted the dove I was thinking about you know the descending dove uh, the Holy Spirit I wanted a brighter spot to begin with so I sort of started with a um, yellow a bright yellow spot. Um, well, that's a little dingy. That's, uh, well, that's a bit better. And remember, it'll always dry lighter than uh, what it starts out with, right? And then um, you want to rinse your brush, or maybe you don't. <laughs> you can just add some Splotches of red in places. Um, you can always uh, splatter too, right? You could splatter after it's dry splattering. Don't forget the beauty that is splattering. Uh, a little darker red. And I'm being really random about this, okay? Um, but I'm working fairly quickly. Um, just because we're going to be adding saran wrap and I don't want to, um, I don't want it to dry, right? Before you get your saran wrap going on there. Ooh, that's some really dark purples. Oh, fun. some yellow splotches in there but yes it'll probably mix and that's fine remember this is your this is just now if you want to do an underpainting that has very specific um, shapes and colors or pictures that's fine too um, don't feel as though you are you know how that is there is no wrong um, this is your creativity, so how you want to go ahead and do it is absolutely okay. 
Um, and then I'm going to take some saran wrap. Now I'm taking smaller, like I'm not taking a section that's going to fit over the whole piece because you'd be working with a nine by 12 piece as well, right? But I'm going to take the paper, the saran, and I'm going to scrunch it up so I've got room to really move in it, right? So you can sort of smoosh it up together and then you can kind of twist it, right? Kind of twist it in there and that'll give that the pattern in it will sort of give that illusion to a bit of movement or winds. Um, and maybe down below, maybe it's more about, you know, the upward motions, creating those little peaks. And if you've got some white spots and you want to just sort of rub it in so that it fills in those white spots, that's great. But just, I like giving it some sort of, like I say, ooh, yes, your fingers may get, you may get the paint on them, that's okay. But just giving sort of giving it that point up. I'm just doing this, sort of pushing them together a bit to sort of give that illusion of this kind of, you know, the upward motion. Oops. And then uh, you're going to want to leave that to dry. And try not to take a hair dryer to it, um, just because you'll find that if you lift that off right now, um, first of all, you don't want to be melting the saran to be using the hair dryer on top of it. Um, but um, if you lift it off right now, it's potentially there still could be pooling and you don't want then, unless you do want the hairdryer blowing your, your paint around, but you may lose that texture, right, that is being created by the saran wrap. So just set it aside, walk away, start thinking about what you want to put on your um, piece as far as um, as far as the oh, um, shapes go, do you want just flames? Do you want a dove shape? How are you going to go about doing that? Do you want just swirl patterns as the, as the, as the, the wind, as the breath, as the Holy Spirit's breath? Um, what, and maybe words, right? Maybe it's words about your transformation, the winds of change. Um, maybe it is those spirit sightings you want to add in there. So here, um, here was a piece that I did earlier with the saran and now we'll remove the saran and see what we have as far as. Okay. So now I don't know how well... Uh, you might be able to see that on camera, but let me, after I so carefully got it back down onto the paper, um, right? So some interesting textures and um, yeah, we'll see what we can See what we can see. What sort of uh, spirit sighting might you have in here? Something perhaps that, um, you know, that is the uh, start of a spirit sighting, a start of something that, that you can think of. If you thought to yourself, you know, where, has, where have I seen the spirit at work? Um, what time in my life have I had that spirit working? Um, you know, God works in mysterious ways, right? The Holy Spirit, where, um, where in your life, at what point in your life? So you may find that there are um, patterns that you may want to focus on. You might find there's very interesting patterns happening under here. The, the saran, it's, it, it is really unique. It does leave some um, things that you could really, um, I think, take advantage of. Um, I mean, you could go ahead and if you wanted, 
you could totally just outline um, each of these little sections that you see, these interesting shapes and, and little bits. Um, this is part of your spiritual practice, right? This taking time, you're in prayer, you're in uh, contemplation. It's that contemplative state of mind, um, that contemplative, or, you know, the be still, be still and know that I am God. Um, and, and perhaps in that time, you may want to go through and, and actually trace with, you know, a super ultra fine um, Sharpie and just go ahead and trace all these little unique shapes that are in there. It's not unlike walking. You know how sometimes when you're out for a walk, and in particular I find this when I'm out walking with um, a friend or somebody that you converse with easily, that while you're out walking, some of the most amazing ideas can come to mind when you are walking with another person and in conversation. There is something about conversing while you are walking that problems are, are easier to solve, um, new ideas come, perhaps it's, you know, releasing yourself from all of the other thoughts because you're not necessarily focusing on anything other than the walking, um, or it's just allowing your brain, <laughs> it's the, maybe it's just perhaps the blood flow. I like to think that there's, you know, oftentimes that our ideas are, um, come certainly from a higher power and that there is, uh, that the Holy Spirit is at work. So this is kind of that same idea that it is just, you are allowing yourself and have some quiet music playing and you're just going to go through and you are going to trace those little shapes um, for no other reason than perhaps just as an, and maybe you want to do it, you know, trace them all in, in red or maybe for you, the Holy Spirit, you want to trace them all in gold. If you've got a gold gel pen, you could trace them all with gold gel pen. Um, right, and you could, you could continue to do that. Perhaps you want to write in words um, that you, you want to write in somewhere, and it could be big, it could be small, it could be in a, in a space like this where there's not much pa other pattern happening. Um, and maybe you want to write in um, Holy Spirit, um, breath, um, change, transformation, uh, new, um, any of these words that you um, want to add that would probably thoughts of, of, you know, what you want to happen or what you would like to happen during the season of Pentecost. And, um, you know, perhaps it's, I mean, it could be a million things, right, for you. Um, maybe it's one thing. Maybe you're very clear about what it is that you want to ch see change right now. And I'm sure that for most of us right now, change, we've been through so much change um, over this last year that we were looking for change into something that we um, once were, but I, think, I don't think that's possible either, right? I think that we are moving into um, definitely even in the return to normal, um, that there is a movement of newness, that things will still be new and there will be a different perspective um, after all that we have, have seen or challenged, been challenged with over this last year. So once you do all of this, um, and it's like it's dry, right? You've, you've done if you wanted to make any markings, if you wanted any words, the next thing that you're going to do then is take a piece of chalk or a pencil, depending on how dark the colors are on your piece, pencil may show up better than the chalk. Um, it's just the pencil, if you do make a boo-boo with a line that you do really do want to get rid of, um, a kneaded eraser works much better actually than um, a, a regular eraser on something that's got the paint on it, like the watercolor paper and stuff. It, it'll lift the pencil more easily. This is why I like the chalk, because the chalk, then you can just take a dry paper towel. If you happen to 
um, place chalk somewhere where you didn't, you know, a marking where you didn't want it, and then just some dry paper towel, and you can just lightly rub it away, and you would never necessarily know that it was there. Yay! <laughs> um, all right, so maybe you, um, you know, want the winds, like the flame. I mean, who knows? Again, it, it depends on your patterns, depends on how those patterns are happening for you. Um, but maybe you want, you know, the shape of a, the shape of a flame, right? And maybe you want then, you know, a person's head, right? So you would just go ahead and you would draw these things in with your chalk, and then you would take your um, a thin brush, you know, something like this that's that's skinny, and you would dip it in your white paint. And again, I was just using the um, medium body. Uh, white paint from, from Michael's in, a, in the tube, the Liquitex, but I would certainly suggest if you have it at home to go with the fluid um, in like the little um, bottles, right, of just craft, white craft acrylic, um, because it's going to be easier. And then you would just take your, um, once you've done your patterns, you go ahead and then you dip it in your white and you trace around, you go around and fill in then um, all of those patterns, right? You take your brush, go around where your chalk was lightly. And it, you, I had to do two coats, okay? So the, sometimes it's I find that it's just more important that you get that paint line down initially, that tracing, and then fill it in, and then fill it in again, just a little more, unless you don't want, I mean, some of the examples I think that I sent you, you could still really see in sections, the pattern below, and that is fine. That could be an artistic um, choice for you, right? Um, but yes, you just go ahead and you paint around those items that you had done with the chalk, and fill it in with your with your white. Now you may decide that you don't want the white and that you would prefer a different color, maybe orange, maybe um, maybe it's blue, maybe like the contrast of the blue and all of the, depending on what your, whether it's the swirlies for the wind or whether it's all filled with flames, again, that's up to you. I'm just choosing white because it's sort of a neutral um, kind of thing, but maybe you would choose a different color. Um, maybe you want black, maybe you want the, you know, that that intensity of the of the Holy Spirit um, descending and and people being awoken, if you will. Um, yeah, maybe you want to do it in black and do it really intense. That's up to you. But um, the, that's the process anyway. And so um, I think that's pretty much it. Enjoy this. It is fun. Um, it's fun just to lay the color down, right? And then smoosh it all up together with the saran wrap. Um, the surprise of always peeling the saran wrap off and, and seeing what you're going to get. And then what you may want to do with all of those patterns that you find in there. And then with your chalk, right? Then you go ahead and you trace out what you want. And then once you've got those outlines done, do them in paint. Right, go around those chalk lines then again with paint and then fill in all of those in-between spaces, all that negative space, fill it in. And uh, I used an angled brush at that point um, just because I found that the angled brush then was easy to get around um, and then fill in. So this was just a, an angled flat, right, um, that you could use. So have fun, enjoy, and uh, give yourself some time to think about what it is that this that um, the Pentecost means to you. And, and yes, and I look forward to seeing what you end up creating. All right. So let's recenter ourselves now, as before you get into your 
spiritual practice of creating those amazing um, mixed media Pentecost pieces. And they, I am looking really, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, what you're going to end up creating because I think that there's just, once you start thinking about it, there's just so many, so many ways you could go. So feet as flat as you can on the floor and your back up as straight as you can to get those deep breaths in. On that first deep breath, I want you to breathe in the spirit's whisper. And on the way out, blowing out the winds of change. And breathing in the spirit's whisper. And on the way out, blowing the winds of change. And one more time, breathing in the spirit's whisper. And on the way out, blowing out the winds of change. And together we say, Creator God, quiet my mind before it passes judgment on this prayer, my gift of time to you. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy uh, your your creating this week. Stay open. Keep your minds open. Keep your hearts open. And while you're out and about, um, or while you're out for a walk in that amazing weather that we're currently having, stay open to those spirit sightings. I just love that term that the Right Reverend Richard Bott used those spirit sightings. So I wish for you many spirit sightings this week. Have an amazing week and we'll see you next week for Trinity Sunday. Take care. Bye now.